Whether we like it or not, one of the tools we all have to deal with daily is the mouse. Personally, I've spent many years, perhaps decades, searching for the perfect mouse. And finally, I think I found it. Let me share my journey with you. In this video, I'll walk you through all the mice I've used, from the cheapest to the most sophisticated including trackpads and trackballs. I'll explain why I decided to switch them up. The goal is to help you find your perfect mouse and avoid the mistakes I've made. Remember, a mouse is a personal device and what might bother or please me about its features could be the opposite for you. So let's start with the first mouse. <laughs> this was my initial mouse and as you can see is one of the simplest mice out there. It's not wireless and it doesn't have any extra functions. I used this for many years and honestly I never questioned it. If I hadn't switched from Windows to Mac I might still be using it. It works well, it does its job and comes with a reasonable price tag. Now, would I recommend such a mouse for someone working with music? Definitely not. There are so many things you can do with a mouse to speed up your workflow, making it worthwhile to explore other options. As I mentioned before, when I got my first Mac, it came with the Magic Mouse, and that's where the problems began. While the Magic Mouse has an attractive design, and seems interesting on paper, it's not ergonomic at all. After using it for several months, I started experiencing hand pain, and honestly, besides the ability to scroll with the touch surface and some gestures, this mouse isn't particularly special. And let's not even mention its famous charging port. So here I was enjoying my new computer, but with terrible hand pain and began researching what type of mouse could alleviate my situation. If you're in the Apple world, one of the first options you have is the trackpad. The trackpad is undoubtedly an interesting device that could work for many, but unfortunately it didn't work for me. And let me tell you why. Despite the trackpad offering an interesting mode of use and gestures that optimize your workflow, the fundamental flaw, in my opinion, is that while using it, you can only rest one finger. If you rest more than one finger, you'll trigger various gestures, such as scrolling with two fingers or dragging with three fingers. This means you have to keep the other fingers in the air, inevitably causing fatigue in the muscles of your upper hand. While this mouse may work for those with regular use, if you're working in music production and using your mouse in long sessions, it's not the most ergonomic solution out there. So here I was, still unable to find my perfect mouse. I decided to turn to YouTube to see if I could get some advice. As many of you probably already know, many producers and sound engineers on YouTube use a trackball mouse with the most well-known ones being from the Kensington brand. Seeing the excellent reviews these types of mice received, I rushed to buy two different models, hoping to finally get my perfect mouse. Unfortunately, neither of these two worked for me, and I'll tell you why. So, this is the first one I'm talking about, and This is the other one I also tried out. So firstly, the ball didn't rotate as smoothly as I wished. After reading online reviews, I understood that this was considered normal and supposedly would improve with usage over time. However, I couldn't wait for weeks or months for the mouse to function as it should. 
The second reason is that despite being able to rest all your fingers, you always end up lifting your palm and fingers upwards to grip the ball. Similar to what happened with the trackpad, I still experienced pain in the upper part of my hand. So the trackball wasn't the solution either. After watching more online reviews, I decided to try one of the most popular mouse of the moment. And yeah, you've guessed it, I'm talking about the Logitech MX3 for Mac. Let me tell you that I was satisfied with this mouse for quite some time. It's relatively comfortable and offers extra features like buttons and gestures that you can configure using Logitech's application. But once the honeymoon phase ended, I started noticing its flaws. Well, it's really just one flaw, but for me, it turned out to be a deal breaker. And I'm talking about the weight. This mouse weighs around 140 grams, which is almost three times heavier compared to the lighter gaming mice. It's not that I like to complain about everything, but when we're talking about a tool that you use all day, every day, every aspect needs to be optimized as much as possible. So I decided to change the mouse again. But since I liked the functionality of the Logitech's MX3, I decided to stick with the same brand and try a slightly smaller, lighter and more ergonomic model. And I'm talking about the Logitech Lift. Now, I used this mouse for quite some time and I was very happy with it. However, there came a moment when the vertical hand position started to bother me a bit and despite being quite ergonomic, it still weighed around 120 grams, which is only 20 grams less than the MX3. So at this point, I made up my mind to go to the other extreme and try something new. That's when the following thought occurred to me. Who uses the mouse the most and places the highest importance on its performance? Well, obviously gamers. So I sought out one of the lightest mice on the market and ended up trying this one, the Logitech Superlight 2, weighing approximately 58 grams, which is half the weight of the previous mouse I used, the Lift. Let me tell you, for me it was like discovering a new world because having a mouse this light is practically like having nothing in your hand. Additionally, the precision in a mouse like this is much better. I used it for about two weeks and I was quite happy with it. And trying out this one led me to finally <laughs> finding my perfect mouse. So, what was the issue with this one? Simply put, I felt it lacked a bit more functionality, meaning some extra buttons that would allow me to map certain functions and be faster and more efficient. The thing is that after using all these mice, I knew what I needed. A lightweight mouse with lots of extra buttons and an application for configuring it. Knowing that gaming mice perform better than productivity mice, I explored the gaming mouse market. And this particular mouse caught my attention. Are you ready? Here it is, my friend. The Corsair Dark Star. My perfect mouse for music production. Firstly, regarding weight, it's a solid 96 gram. A bit heavier than the Logitech Super Light, but offering much, but much more functionality. It has 15 programmable buttons that you can configure using the included software. 
But what's most interesting is the positioning of these buttons. They are well placed and easily reachable without significant movements. Now, if you're a user of the Logitech MX Master 3, this mouse offers many more gestures while being lighter and more precise. It's quite comfortable too. It also has something I hadn't seen in other mice, the tilt gesture. For example, I have it configured so that every time I make this movement, it opens the side windows in Cubase. But the real power of this mouse lies in using it with applications like Keyboard Maestro or Better Touch Tool. For example, I have this button here configured so that in Cubase, no matter where the cursor is, pressing this button opens all the plugins in that channel. So I don't need to go and find the little E button in the mixer. And if I press this button again on any of the plugin windows, it either puts it in bypass or activates it again. Finally, pressing this button closes all the plugin windows. I made a video some time ago on how to configure a similar functionality in Cubase, so if you're interested, you can click here. If you'd prefer a more detailed video on using Keyboard Maestro and Better Touch tool in combination, leave a like on the video and a comment to let me know that you're interested. If I get enough requests, I might do the video for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.